really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Today, I'm going to be talking about the subject of gratitude, which is relevant because here in the U.S., the day this episode will air is one day before we celebrate Thanksgiving. And so I always like to talk about gratitude at this time of year. And for those of you not from the U.S., uh, it's a good idea to take a day out to talk about gratitude anyway, whether or not it's a holiday where you live or anything that you practice, you might want to join us all and dedicate a day to gratitude and thankfulness. And again, it doesn't really matter what the history of this holiday is. Some people dislike Thanksgiving here in the U.S. because of the everything that it entails, the beginning of this Thanksgiving holiday and how it was started and the oppression of the settlers uh, toward the indigenous Native Americans here in our country. But we can look beyond that and still say it's important that we have a day to express gratitude so we can bear the pain of the history of a holiday that we share together, but we can still in our own hearts know along with that pain, it's it's even all the more important that we find a way to express gratitude within ourselves for life. For the past four episodes, I've been talking about the shadow and it's really nice that Thanksgiving is coming now and it's time to talk about gratitude because I believe gratitude is one of the most important practices we can utilize when we're working on our own shadow. We've looked at the fact that healing is an inside job. If we want to heal ourselves, heal our own lives, if we want to heal our relationships, our communities, our country, our planet, It's an inside job for each one of us. We each have to go within, look at our own shadow issues, our own wounds, our own pain, and begin to heal ourselves. And that's how we will contribute the most to the healing of everything that's outside of us. So we can't be fooled into thinking that we have to spend all of our time and energy focusing on causes that are external to us and ignore the fact that it's our own shadow that contributes to the collective shadow on this planet. And we each have a responsibility to work on ourselves. So I will say it again, gratitude is one of the most powerful practices we can utilize in our own lives to help us heal and grow. So today, this Thanksgiving episode, I'll be talking a little more about gratitude, but I have a lot of quotes to share with you and some poetry to read for Thanksgiving. So I'm, I'm excited to share this with you today and hope that you enjoy it as, as well as I enjoy reading this poetry. So I'll start with a quote from Tecumseh, the Shawnee chief and warrior who lived in the late 18th century and early 19th century. And Tecumseh said, when you arise in the morning, give thanks for the food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. And this is a really important point that sometimes we can get lost in our own pain and suffering and fail to see the beauty that is around us and within us at all times. And we may think that there's nothing good happening in life and that there's nothing to be grateful for. And that's the most tragic place we can be if we lose our sight of of what brings us joy and what makes life worth living from moment to moment. And most often, as you'll see in some of the other poems I, I will read to you today, It's the very smallest things that contribute to our joy of living and to our love and the beauty in our lives. 
And sometimes we miss those small things and we forget about them. So part of this little discussion today and sharing these poems with you is to bring you back home to your own heart and to remind you and help you to look for the small things that give your life joy and make it meaningful. And so I'm suggesting that we learn to practice gratitude even when we can't see or feel the goodness in our own lives, that we learn to be grateful for whatever is right now, whatever we're experiencing, whatever whatever is happening, whatever is in front of us, whatever is going on inside of us. And it requires us to be able to see each moment of life as sacred, sacred, even with its challenges, even with darkness, even with pain, even with confusion. Every moment of life is sacred and there is nothing that we can take for granted, nothing that we should throw away or discount as meaningless or of no value. Melody Beatty, who's the author of the book Codependent No More, wrote, Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. So this underscores just what I've been talking about. When you start with gratitude for whatever you have in this moment, suddenly what you have becomes sacred and becomes fulfilling and abundant and beautiful and enough in its own way. It still might be painful. It still might be dark. It still might feel confusing but it becomes enough for this moment and you begin to see light within it and you begin to find love and you begin to feel joy if you can start with gratitude in the first place rather than waiting for something good to happen so that you can then feel grateful for it. Be grateful for whatever is here right now. And as Melody Beatty says, gratitude itself turns what is dark and negative and painful into its counterpart, what is lighter, what is more beautiful, what is more healing and more nurturing and more loving. So I love it. Turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. When I read that, it makes me think of uh, some something I talked about around shadow work is that When we're acting through our shadow, it's as if we're looking at life through a very dirty window and everything in life looks negative and dark and also blurry and dim because the window we're seeing through, the lens we're looking through, isn't clear. There's no clarity in it. And so Everything that we see in life is tainted by the window that we look through. But gratitude is one of the ways to clean the window, to clean up our perspective, to give us a much clearer view of what's happening around us. So when we practice gratitude in this moment, it helps us have a better view in every other moment of what's actually happening in the world. It allows us to let in more joy and more love and more beauty. And Melody Beatty, as she says, gratitude makes sense of our past. It helps us sort through some of the old baggage and the wounds that we've been carrying. It helps us put them in into proper order so that they're less confusing, so that they actually can find a place within us, that whatever has happened to us has a place to belong. It brings us more peace in this moment. And as she said, creates a vision for tomorrow. That's cleaning the window that we're looking through so that we can look ahead and see a brighter, more clear future as as we look out at what is coming and what is in store for us in our lives. So gratitude is essential 
and it may not come naturally to us. We have to practice it in order to learn it. We have to intentionally work on it. And that means we might have to set aside time during our day to focus on gratitude. I've talked about this before. It may need to become part of whatever daily practice we have for adjusting to our day if we do yoga or exercise or journal or meditate whatever that is we may need to incorporate gratitude into that ritual and all it takes is a few moments a few moments of saying I'm so thankful for today I'm so happy that I'm here I'm so grateful that I woke up this morning, that I'm still breathing. I'm grateful that I have life at all. And and I'm going to be sharing some poems that will help us look at reasons to be grateful and ways to acknowledge our gratitude. But it's essential to recognize that if we don't make space for gratitude in our lives intentionally, we may overlook it because, again, as I said, it doesn't come naturally to us. It does not come naturally to our egos at all. We have to train the ego to see life differently in order to see reasons why it's important to be grateful and why there is always something around us to be grateful. As Tecumseh said, if you can't see that something is there to be grateful for, the fault lies within yourself. And that's because you are stuck inside the woundedness of the shadow and unable to see beyond it. But you have to begin somewhere. And even if you can't see anything in the moment to be grateful for, sit down with your journal and decide, I'm going to find something that I can write down. And maybe it's, oh, I'm grateful that I have a pen. I'm grateful that I have a piece of paper to write on because there are people in our world who don't have something as simple as a pen or a piece of paper. So start wherever you are. Find the simplest, tiniest thing. I'm grateful that I can flip a switch and turn a light on in my house. Find what is around you, any positive thing that you can be grateful for, and begin to focus on that and begin to say, thank you. I am so so fulfilled with gratitude that I have this blessing in my life, whatever it is, and no matter how bad everything else in your life is. So I want to read a couple of poems that I really love. These are some, these are poems that were kind of curated as being relevant for Thanksgiving. And I hope you like them too. The first one is called Being Home by Ganilla Norris. Many times today I will cross over a threshold. I hope I will catch a few of those times. I need to remember that my life is, in fact, a continuous series of thresholds from one moment to the next, from one thought to the next, from one action to the next. Help me appreciate how awesome this is. How many are the chances to be really alive Help me cross into the present moment, into wonder, into grace, the now place where we all are unfolding moment by moment. I love this poem. I think, I think it's great for Thanksgiving because most of us will cross over a literal threshold. We will enter into someone else's home or welcome someone into ours. We will cross a threshold into the kitchen or the dining room. And I think it's a really nice thought to remember as you walk across the thresholds of Thanksgiving Day that these physical, literal thresholds are symbols for the opportunities we have in life, always passing through a new doorway, always entering into something new. And I love in this poem to use the, use the threshold as a reminder to come into the present moment and and see this threshold, I'm going from last moment into the next moment. And now as we sit down together to celebrate gratitude together, I want to be fully present in this moment. So gratitude is something we can only feel in the present moment. That's why we need to bring our focus and our attention into the moment that we are, are working towards expressing gratitude. We have to be all here. We have to be focused on it. 
looking for the gratitude and for a reason to say thank you. And I think it's a lovely practice if you ask everyone sitting around your table on this day of gratitude to mention something that they're grateful for because it reminds all of us that that should always be our outlook on life. Our perspective should always be, what am I grateful for in this moment? What is around me that I want to say thank you for? So let the thresholds you cross on Thanksgiving Day remind you to come into the moment, be present, enjoy Enjoy all of it, every taste, every aroma, every bit of laughter, every bite that you enjoy, savor it, make the most of it, be present and be grateful for all of it. The next poem that I want to read, uh, I also love. It's called Perhaps the World Ends Here by Joy Harjo. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it, we make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. This poem also touches my heart and just these reminders as you sit down at a table to dine together with with the loves of your life or whoever you are with. It might even be people you're in conflict with at the moment or struggling to get along with. Remember the beauty of the table as this gathering place where we all come together, how the table connects us and it connects us through the history of our own lives. All of the many times we've sat at a table with other people, it connects us throughout history with all of our ancestors, all of the people who have gathered together around tables for these celebrations. So as you sit around a table with those you love, be thinking of all of this beauty from the past all of these memories all this history that is contained within this act of coming together and breaking bread together and allow that to feed your own gratitude for the day just the act of being together side by side and and dining eating and nourishing ourselves together that is something truly worth being grateful for And the next poem I have for you is called The Traveling Onion by Naomi Shihab Nye. And she begins with a quote from Better Living Cookbook, which says, It is believed that the onion originally came from India. In Egypt, it was an object of worship. Why, I haven't been able to find out. From Egypt, the onion entered Greece and on to Italy, thence into all of Europe. So here's Naomi's poem, The Traveling Onion. When I think how far the onion has traveled just to enter my stew today, I could kneel and praise all small forgotten miracles, crackly paper peeling on the drain board, pearly layers in smooth agreement, the way the knife enters onion and onion falls apart on the chopping block, a history revealed. And I would never scold the onion for causing tears. 
It is right that tears fall for something small and forgotten. How at meal we sit to eat, commenting on texture of meat or herbal aroma, but never on the translucence of onion, now limp, now divided, or its traditionally honorable career, for the sake of others, disappear. So this poem, on the one hand, reminds me to be grateful for every morsel of food that we have to eat, including the onion that unseen oftentimes and undetected makes such a difference in all of these amazing dishes that we will be eating in, in everything that it touches, everything that contains it. The onion plays a vital role, yet it often disappears as she describes. It's often unnoticed. And for me, the deeper meaning behind this poem is that what nourishes us, what strengthens us, what benefits us, what makes our lives more pungent and full of flavor is often the invisible, the unseen, or the seemingly insignificant thing, the tiny things, the little miracles, the moments in life that can so easily pass by us without our notice. Those tiny things like the onion within a stew or or within our our stuffing or in a salad dressing, those tiny things are where we can begin to be grateful because those are the things that nourish us and that keep us going and that help us grow and that eventually will bring transformation for us that make all the difference in our lives. So this poem reminds me, be grateful for every little thing If there's nothing big in your life that you can find that you can feel grateful for right now, look for the tiny, unnoticed things that you hadn't seen before. Look at the shape of the spoon that you're eating with and how perfect it is for for the food it needs to hold to bring to your mouth. How, How small is that? How simple is that? And yet, it makes all the difference. So... Remember the tiny unnoticed things, the little bits of onion that flavor your food, the little bits of love in your life, the tiny little moments that make your life special and unique to you and are worthy of your gratitude on Thanksgiving Day, but on every day from here on. And I'm going to end this with a uh, a writing by Molly Fumia, which I think would make a really good grace to say at the table before eating Thanksgiving dinner. So I'll read this to you here. And if I can, I'm planning to leave it in the notes that go with this podcast episode if you're interested in copying it and perhaps using it because I think it's a really nice practice on Thanksgiving Day, but every day before a meal to show gratitude and Be grateful. So um, this is from Molly Fumia. To be joyful in the universe is a brave and reckless act. The courage for joy springs not from the certainty of human experience, but the surprise. Our astonishment at being loved, our bold willingness to love in return, These wonders promise the possibility of joyfulness, no matter how often and how harshly love seems to be lost. Therefore, despite the world's sorrows, we give thanks for our loves, for our joys, and for the continued courage to be happily surprised. So, I wish for you, as you sit down, with friends and family, loved ones, feared ones, (laughs) frustrating and annoying ones, may you remember the courage to be happily surprised in your day and to be grateful for each and every sacred moment that arises for you on Thanksgiving Day and every day thereafter. Bye-bye.